We keep things rolling here on the Sports Cubicle on WCPT 820 AM and now on WSBC 1240 AM Chicago. I'm your host, Mike Mercado, with Paul Shivari and Pauly. We have ourselves a very special guest here on the Sports Cubicle. We have got a great guest on the Sports Cubicle today. We've got a legend, a 10-time NCAA champion, two as a player, eight as a coach. She was also a two-time NCAA National Player of the Year in 1995 and 1996, the ACC Female Athlete of the Year, the women's lacrosse coach for the Northwestern Wildcats, Kelly Amante-Hiller. Welcome to the Sports Cubicle. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. So, um, I, I mean, I don't even know where to begin because just reading on your resume, it's such an impressive uh, just list of accomplishments and you're going into your 23rd season with the Northwestern Wildcats women's lacrosse team. You are the defending national champions. Since you've you've been through this before as uh, you know the champions from the previous season going into a new season, does that kind of change the way that you prepare? Is there any extra pressure that's kind of like a target on your back being the the national champions? I think that we don't we don't really, you know, we try to as much as possible to be in the present moment. Um, I feel like we have a lot of experience as a coaching staff um, kind of in this situation. And I think just not getting too caught up um, in, you know, what is perceived. I think that how we look at things is our choice. And if we look at things where, you know, we have a target on our back, there's a lot of pressure, then, you know, that's just going to create anxiety and stress for us. And I think if we, if we really just appreciate each, each day and, um, you know, really look at things and are grateful for, you know, every opportunity that we have in front of us and savor every moment and just go out there and compete at our best and try to be cohesive as a group. I think, you know, we'll, we'll have a chance for success. It's not guaranteed, but you know, that's the exciting part is to be able to kind of test yourself and see what happens. Looking at the makeup of the roster coming into 2024 here, you're, you're about to start your new season in just a couple of weeks, uh, January 28th exhibition versus Stanford. A lot of great returning players to this roster. I see mm-hmm. um, you know, Aaron uh, Coy Kendall, Sammy White, Madison Taylor, who was uh, the Big Ten Freshman Player of the Year. Of course, uh, Izzy Skane and, and Molly LaLiberty. Um, you know, what's, what's mm-hmm. it like kind of having those women on the team and kind of building the chemistry that you have going into the season, having such great veteran players like that? Well, I think it comes with it, some great advantages, and then it also comes with some challenges. I mean, I, I think every scenario that you have has both. And I think we're just kind of trying to establish uh, who we are as a team this year, um, and just really build on that every single day and enjoy that building process. Um, it is nice to have, you know, people that have some experience and know how, um, but I think it's also nice to have newcomers and, and, you know, we're trying to really balance both situations and, and, um, you know, obviously like just having players that have experienced, you know, success at the highest level and kind of knows what, know what it's like to compete at that level. It, it definitely, you know, helps and is an advantage. From your success in Maryland and in Northwestern and then all the players you've seen come through and watching the sport grow, does it amaze you year to year how often the athletes are getting bigger, faster, stronger, how much they're digesting the offense and defense during the offseason so much quicker, how smart these athletes are, on top of obviously the amazing collegiate work that they're doing at Northwestern, but does it ever just amaze you how fast the sport is growing? Definitely. I mean, just just from where I started uh, playing and now coaching, I mean, just the amount that that the game has really truly leveled up. It's 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 incredible. Um, they the players truly are, you know, faster, bigger, stronger. Um, and I think that from from my perspective, I feel like I've grown as a coach to kind of know how to coach in today's day and age. I wanted to ask you about the scouting process that and the recruitment process that you go through, because it seems like 
you know, you have some out of the box thinking. Like I'd heard earlier in your time with Northwestern, you had a couple of women on the team that hadn't even played lacrosse before. And then if I saw this correctly, uh, maybe like the other day, uh, a, a Twitter post from the the team saying that you borrowed a couple of field hockey players uh, for the team this mm-hmm. year. Um, kind of explain that how you can find um, these just like talent and skill sets out of women that don't necessarily play lacrosse as their number one sport. Yeah, definitely, man. I think we we really truly try to um, focus on people that are going to be right for our mentality, our program. Um, and I think that we feel pretty confident in our ability to coach and develop uh, as an athlete within, you know, the, t- the style that we play. So we're totally open to kind of finding new talent from, you know, whether it be different locations Uh, different backgrounds or, you know, maybe someone that hasn't played in a while, like Aaliyah Marshall was an all American on the field hockey team and, and seeing what she could do or Lindsay Frank, um, same thing on the field hockey team. So I think that's an X factor uh, of ours is that we, we're not afraid to take a risk. We're not afraid to go against the grain and do something different. And I think those, those risks have truly helped us gain an edge over the years. And then when you're looking at certain athletes and their their fortitude and their mindset and their background and what kind of makes a person the athlete and vice versa, you know, when, when you're going to a place like Northwestern and there is expectations both in the classroom and on the field, how important is it to, when you're scouting a player, not just on the field, but to see how they're living life on social media, how they're interacting with the sport, how they're at- interacting with their classmates and in their classes, because it's all encompassing when you guys are doing your not just super athletes, you're super students as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we as a coaching staff really view our role is, is to help uh, develop our athletes, student athletes as people, uh, first and foremost. And we feel like if they can carry their se- themselves and, and be quality people, not only will they have an, a great experience, but the team will have a great experience and will have, you know, an, an increased chance for success. Um, so I do think that that is part of our recruiting process because, you know, you, it, it takes a lot of effort to completely remold someone and, and get them aligned with, uh, you know, what we are. And so we really try to be really, truly honest with who we are and, you know, what our expectations are and, and what we're about. And I think that, you know, people select and, and self-select um, based on what they know. And, and we don't get too jammed up if, if someone chooses a different school. That's, that's fine. That's their choice. And we really want the people that, you know, want to be a part of what we're about. How proud are you as not just a coach and a former athlete and somebody who loves the sport, but just kind of seeing where the women's lacrosse has really, specifically in Northwestern, but the sport in general, has major athletes in all wides of, of professional sports making a big deal out of out of you guys which went in the national championship and how amazing the athletes are at Northwestern. It, how cool is it for you to kind of see the foundation that you guys have built where it's not just a regional thing, it's not just a Big Ten thing, it's not just a sports thing, but I mean, you have Stu Gotts on the Dan Levitard show talking about <laughs> Northwestern uh, lacrosse. Like it, it, You guys are on the map. How cool is it seeing from your days of being a, a, a killer uh, at Maryland to this point right now of this foundation you guys have built? Yeah, I think it's really exciting. It's exciting for our sport, um, you know, and and I think us just being added to the Olympics for 2028. There's just like a lot of momentum, and obviously you see, obviously you see nationwide. There's so much momentum with women's sports. Um, just to see what's happening with with some of the other sports, like women's basketball and and volleyball and you know, filling football stadiums and it's, it's truly pretty incredible. And, you know, something that I dreamed about when I was a kid and I feel, you know, really proud that I'm having 
some level of a hand in kind of pushing our sport to the next level so that, you know, this next generation can really gain that experience. And, you know, hopefully that continues to, to go in the right direction. We're speaking with Kelly Amati Hiller, the head coach of the Northwestern women's lacrosse team, also a uh, coach in 2019 with the Team USA U19 lacrosse team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Kelly, you kind of gave that nugget there, the lacrosse entering the Olympics in 2028. Has the mm-hmm. U.S. Olympic Committee consulted you about what a national lacrosse program would look like in the Olympics? Uh, no, I think it's it's pretty recent. They just made that decision in October, so... I think that, you know, US, USA lacrosse is really just trying to get their ducks in a row and align and, and establish, you know, how they're going to kind of approach this. And I'm just really lucky to be part of the national team um, system and, and maybe some of the athletes on my U20 team will end up eventually making that Olympic, which would just be truly incredible. Um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited about this summer. Our games are in, uh, Hong Kong, um, which is also, you know, just such an amazing opportunity, uh, to experience that. So I'm excited for lacrosse in general. Hopefully it's going to continue to grow. It's a really, really special game that was gifted to us by the native American people. And, uh, you know, I couldn't love this game much more. Coach, it's it's amazing that you're you know you're a fixture here in in the Midwest in Chicago, Evanston, and obviously your family in the East Coast. And we know how important lacrosse is to the East Coast residents. We know how important it is growing nationwide on the West Coast and in the South, and specifically here in the Midwest. You're you're talking about the national team and the Olympics, and you're going to see and you've seen all the crops of amazing talent. And I wonder, being in Evanston as long as you've been here and and seeing the growth in this sport. Do you ever think about what the treasure trove of amazing student athletes might be here in Chicago in the next 15, 20 years as this sport continues to grow and you have a metropolis like Chicago becoming a hotbed for one of the great universities in our country? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, um, you know, the Midwest in general is, is very serious about their sports and, you know, puts a lot into it. Obviously, you know, you see great tra- talent from football to basketball to wrestling, volleyball, um, so many of these great sports. And I think, you know, lacrosse has really truly been emerging for a while. And, you know, ever since I, I got here, I, I worked with, uh, you know, actually current loyal Academy coach, John Dwyer and, um, just kind of helping try to expand the opportunities in this area. And there's so many people, that have helped this game grow in the Midwest level. But to see where it's at now, it's it's pretty exciting. But I can't wait to see where it's going to be in the next, you know, 10 years. A lot of Midwest kids are getting great opportunities to go, you know, play at the highest level at top universities. Obviously, you still have that competitiveness, but do you still get that glee, that happiness, that you had when you were a child playing the sport, knowing that the spotlight has been put on your club and you have answered with great results many times over and now it is an institute. Do you do you still get those vibes? Do you still, after all the winning, after all the great athletes, after all the personal success on and off, do you still get those, those vibes? You know, I think in, in my early days, um, you know, it, it, in and in certain points of my career, you know, I, I almost put too much emphasis on the winning. And I think now I've learned so much as a coach. And, you know, my greatest um, just happiness comes from seeing a young woman uh, just become really confident, you know, really confident in herself through the experiences that she gains here in the classroom and then also on the field. And, you know, that's where I really get my pride and I pour myself into trying to, you know, help these young ladies understand that they can, you know, kind of determine their own mentality and they can also 
uh, determine their own level of confidence based on the choices that they make on a on a daily basis and and really how they talk to themselves, how they talk to each other and and uh, you know my other greatest happiness is just to see how I inspire people to also have great joy for the sport, maybe future coaches, um, you know mentors, whatever uh, that's that's a big part of this for me, too. At Maryland, you played for Cindy Timchell, who's currently the Navy head coach. But I also saw mm-hmm. that she was the first Division One Northwestern head coach. Nice. Was yes. <laughs> was she a big influence on you and your coaching style? And is that also why you chose Northwestern? Yes. Uh, not many people connect those dots, so I'm pretty impressed with you guys right now. But um, she was a huge influence on me. She still is. Um, you know, I really just have learned so much from Cindy. She she looks at the game from a different perspective. <clears throat> she taught me how to look at the game and myself in a different way where, um, you know, believing is, is truly paramount. And, you know, when I had the interview here at Northwestern, of course, I called Cindy and you know, she just told me all the great things about Northwestern and this university. And, you know, she was fortunate enough to actually be assistant field hockey coach and women's lacrosse coach. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny right now. We have a player on our team who played, her mom played for Cindy at Northwestern, both field hockey and lacrosse. So it's like things totally come full circle and there's probably no bigger influencer in my in my career than than Cindy Timshaw. And then to look uh, not not to, to look forward now on the program, but I saw that your niece, uh, Dylan, in, in a recently mm-hmm. uh, uh, published video that, that the lacrosse team put out on YouTube, a documentary about the program. Your niece said uh, not with a straight face, but she said that uh, she'd like to replace you as head coach of the of the the team whenever you step down. Is is there an element of truth to that? Is uh, is Dylan a future coach, or if not, has there been certain women on the team over the last you know twenty years that that you see? Oh, that's that's going to make a good coach someday. Uh, absolutely, I I think uh, you know if Dylan wanted to be a coach, he would be a, an excellent coach. He's very very smart. You know, has a lot of. Uh, passion for for the sport uh the the blood the bloodlines run deep in coaching (laughs) her family her her dad coached uh after his nhl career he coached at the high school level now he's uh a scout in the nhl Uh, her brother just graduated from playing college hockey and now is coaching so you know that that might be her destiny and uh obviously i would love to help support her in that and see what happens so i'm a big mma fan i love brazilian oh, jiu-jitsu right. i need to know <laughs> i heard down the grapevine that uh mma has really inspired some of your coaching how how do you get from what goes on in the mat and rolling on the mat to the lacrosse field wow i'm impressed you know a lot um i am definitely a huge mma fan um you know started with uh ronda rousey when she first you know got into the ufc and and now obviously so many great talents uh from the men's side to the women's side and the reason why i love obviously it's a it's pretty violent sport but the reason why i love it so much is because it's one-on-one and it's probably, you know, one of the hardest things that you could ever do is, is just be able to kind of surrender, go out there and, and uh, battle against someone else. So I really study the sport quite a bit just based from a mentality perspective. That's why I like it so much. Um, and my daughter actually, she, um, started in judo, which is Ronda Rousey and and Kayla Harrison, who's Mm -hmm. in the PFL, um, their, their sport. And so she's pretty, she's actually a black belt now. And she is into wrestling too. She's on her high school wrestling team in one state last year. So, um, I just really love the lessons that those sports 
teach. And um, I think it's very translatable to your life. Um, so I try to take some of that mentality and bring it to my program. And that's probably why I'm the biggest UFC. I love Rose Nama Yunez, Wei Li, the whole, the whole nine yards. <laughs> that's awesome. So for those listening right now, tickets to go see the women's lacrosse team uh, try to go for back-to-back titles this year. They go on sale this week. You can get your tickets uh, right now as you're listening. First home game is going to be Saturday, February 10th versus Syracuse. And this is a tough schedule on the season just right off the bat. Syracuse, then they go on the road at Notre Dame. Coach, is this kind of done on purpose? Do you like uh, giving the team kind of a good challenge right out of the gate? Or is this just kind of how the schedule landed this year? No. 100%. We just really have the philosophy if if we're going to if we're going to do well, you know, we have to test ourselves and what better way to to test ourselves than than go up against the the best opponents. Um, you know, our our Syracuse game, we we played them last year in the first game of the season too. That was our only loss. Um, and, you know, we really try as, as much as we can to, to play the highest caliber schedule so that when we get um, hopefully into playoffs, you know, we really feel like we've been battle tested and uh, we've learned a lot from those experiences. Coach Kelly Amante Hiller joins us, the head coach of the Northwestern women's lacrosse team. Tickets are now on sale. It is a great buy, a great entertainment for you right there. And of course, indoors at the Ryan Field House <laughs> while it's cold, but when things start getting warmer, that beautiful Martin <laughs> Stadium, everyone should go. Coach, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Coach. No, it was my pleasure. Thanks for chatting and go Cats.